Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I just want to share some of my warm-up activity with you. So what I'll tend to do, uh, I, I got up this morning, I just started drawing this. Uh, I get up like 6 a.m. and start doodling. And this is one of the things that I just decided to doodle. Now, the main thing I want to share this with you is this isn't finished art, right? This is, you know, far from even what I would consider me trying to do my best work or anything like that. That's really not the point. What it is, is basically just kind of expressing some ideas on the page and, you know, maybe practicing some inks or practicing a certain texture, uh, a certain angle to a face. I started to draw vision and then I realized I don't even know what vision looks like. I need reference. But uh, same thing with Captain America. I like skew all these characters until I'm looking at pictures. But, but anyways, uh, just kind of practicing and doodling. But what it made me think of is maybe I could share... A little bit of this with you with the idea of like when I go into something we'll, we'll detail this face a little bit over here um, and, and what I might do like I might get to a certain point in a design and you know start to like what I'm doing or want to explore it further in this case this was gonna be like the side view of like Thanos and then I just kind of skewed it and made it into somebody else mainly because when I'm doing this I'm really not holding myself accountable to, you know, doing this exact thing. Uh, like I said, I really very much just let myself float to the next idea. Uh, I think that's kind of what spawns creativity and allows you to kind of warm up a bit better. Um, versus if you jump into an illustration, you say this has got to be an exact certain this and exact certain that, you start to attach a little bit more stress to it right you're like oh this is a project that's got to be done and now if it's not this right way uh, maybe I shouldn't continue maybe I should do something else so that's not what this is this is a warm-up activity and doodling basically but doodling comic art uh, so what I'll do here is just get a, a few like ideas on the page something that I like and then I want to show you how I might ink through this using a couple different uh, micron pens so I just need enough uh, information here to work from. Something like this should be adequate. A couple little rendering lines. I was thinking like this chin piece. I think Thanos had that on his uh, armor. So that's kind of where this started. And like I said, then I just kind of veered off and did a different character. Okay, so let's say something like this gives us enough of a concept uh, and just because people ask, this is uh, just a 0.05 technical pencil. It says 0.7, doesn't it? Goodness, that's not right. That's not right. Or maybe it is. It's got to be or it wouldn't take the lead. So this is a 0.7, which totally blows my mind. And then, um, so what I'm going to do, I generally would soft erase that with a kneaded eraser. This is a Prismacolor kneaded eraser. You stretch it, you clean it. Talked about that in other videos. And then you just jump in here and... You know, you soft erase it down and kind of flatten the one side out. I'm not going to do that because I want you to be able to see the artwork a bit better. If I erase it back too much, uh, maybe it's going to be a little bit harder for you to discern. Maybe I could tilt this a bit. I have like the worst setup here, but hopefully this will read well. And let me do this. Let me just, let me reposition the camera. Let's do that. Okay, so like I said before, I would generally soft erase this, but I'm going to ink right over top. I'm going to start with uh, 0.05, okay? So what's beautiful about these microns is that you can get the various sizes. You can just replace whatever size you need. Always keep a couple of each size, uh, I think, because, you know, they could run out on you, and then, then you know, what are you going to do then? Huh? You didn't think that through, did you? So yeah, so buy a couple of each size. I typically will use 0.05, uh, 03, and 01. Occasionally I will get a uh, 0.08. I'll be honest, another one that I use, I guess it doesn't matter since I'm not being paid by Micron to explain this to you, is the Faber-Castle Pit Pens. And this one is a fine point, but if you notice, it's still pretty darn heavy. Let's say it's heavier than the five. Yeah, it is. So, for instance, that would be kind of better for this heavier line around it. But I want to show you how, by using these, you can still get a nice feeling of almost like a crow quill or a brush. You just have to 
sculpt the lines a bit more. Or I guess in a different way, I guess you sculpt the lines no matter what you're really using. But uh, with a brush, it's obviously a lot quicker and a little more effortless because you're basically just, uh, you know, applying more pressure to the brush. And we'll do some videos on brush work, but I'm a bit out of practice with the brush, so I don't want to do that right away. But what I'll do here is I'll just kind of skip around. Actually, I should close the other pen. Never hold two pens at once. It's dangerous. And there's some funky art supply stuff on the back of this one. Let me clean that off. The drawbacks to like putting these all in one big container. Okay, so I'll use this larger brush. And you can really jump in here like with a Sharpie as well. And you can get some of these heavier, you know, almost pools of, you know, shadowing basically. Get some of that in there. A lot of times I will uh, I'll take a shadow and break it off into line work just in case because if I don't like it I can just fill it in. But sometimes I get some nice little happy accidents there. Huh? Bob Ross reference, you guys. So we all love Bob Ross. If you don't, then you need to take a look in the mirror and see what's going on there. Okay, so again, shadowed areas. You know, but what I like about this is I'm able to get the shadows in, but still control the shape of it. So if I jump in with a Sharpie, then I'm going to be a little bit more, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit more accidental, which isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes you get some really neat effects by just letting the chips fall where they may and then editing your way out of it. So, you know, you see I'm kind of changing the artwork a little bit. I always recommend that. Like, I don't think that whenever you do anything to the artwork you should do an exact replica of what's already there I mean it has to be some pretty tight pencils and obviously that's not what this is this is again more uh, of a practice session and I want to be inventive here so that hopefully I can come up with some new ideas So I'm kind of dabbing around here and there, breaking up lines. You see I'm getting a, a lot of it in with this. You know, since these are kind of hard, uh, I guess they're a felt tip, uh, you can get a thin line by just glancing over it very, very lightly and kind of quickly as well. Remember, you know, quick lines are generally going to be smooth lines. Not every time, but it takes that little bit of bumpiness out of there. And then if I want a heavier line, again, I'm going to re-sculpt that, kind of feather over top of it. Okay, so let's say something like that. I think that's the bulk of the shadowing. I might go back through and really beef up some of this uh, line weight here. So I'm a big fan of line weight. Okay, so something like this. You see adding in some details that aren't really there or weren't in the previous sketch. They're not really there. That line I just put there, it's not really there. Totally not. Okay, so something like that. I don't know if I like that one, but some of these decisions you just make and you gotta live with them. Okay, so now we've got the heavy line work in there. Let's jump down to, I don't know, let's say, I don't want to go all the way down to a 0.01. Let's just jump down to the 0.05. So again, this is the Micron, 0.05. And let's just add these little bits of uh, line work under the eye here, under the brow. So remember, you can always get a nice tapered line by just feathering this line, hitting it a couple times, and then uh, it's kind of like almost a miniature perspective drawing because you're basically doing these little thick to thin points. So you know, that's how perspective will typically work, but I don't know if that's a fair comparison. Just want to give you some ideas as to how you can think about that. And I think that a lot of times it's just good to put little 
bits of detail on almost everything or maybe not everything but you just really want to mix it up so like for instance right here on the cheek just these tiny little you know you see I added a line going across and these tiny little bumps just adds a bit more style to it it's not so plain now uh, so a lot of times with this kind of stuff you just have to be inventive and mix it up a bit and overlap your cross hatching there's I think that in the beginning we think that cross hatching is just cross hatched like once or twice and and that's it we're afraid to make mistakes and make it too uh, you know overly ridiculous or repetitive and all these things and or maybe repetitive is something you do want to avoid I, I think anyways but you could add lots of little ways that you cross hatch and render and you see there wasn't any of this in the um, sketch I don't need it to be because uh, again I'm allowing myself to make mistakes here allow myself to explore some ideas so let's let's say that this is all we want to add for with the uh, the 0.05 and I had a 0.03 but it escaped me um, another one that I'll try but it doesn't always work this is bristol board by the way bristol board smooth not vellum uh, this is another pen that I like a lot it's a pilot uh, precise v7 they're cheap and you can buy them by the box and I guess you can buy everything by the box but uh, it's a nice line I just like to mix it up so let's see if you know, I can incorporate this in there it kind of pulls up a little bit but again it's kind of nice for you know a varied a varied kind of effect but I, I don't know actually I don't think that this is gonna work as well as I hope let me let me switch to the 0.01 so the Micron 0.01, this is going to be a very thin line, I'm actually testing it on the side here, getting the brush to work before I start using it. Uh, so again, now what's nice about this one is I can really, since it's so thin, I can really kind of go across certain areas. It's such a light line that it's not going to hurt. You know, I think that when you do this right here, you want to make sure the line's not so heavy where it's going to cover up the other details or become just uh, like an in-your-face overly strong effect where this is a nice subtle very light kind of shading and actually this brush is a little bit uh, faint it's dying on me a little bit again why you want to keep a couple of these Got another one right here. So make sure you can see this. Uh, so maybe I want a little bit of shadowing on the bottom here, of the chin. Again, since we're experimenting, try a little bit of cross hatching. So I can really use this to round out some of these areas. And what I love about doing this is this is all stuff that I otherwise probably wouldn't try in my day-to-day -day illustrations. Like, maybe I would, but it, but a lot of times I'm not. I'm going to go with what's safe and what I have done a hundred times over so that I get hopefully the best result. But sometimes, sometimes you get the best result by throwing caution to the wind. Uh, but the main thing is that when you do this, you're going to find new things within your work. So play around with this. Uh, let me try one more thing before I bring this one to a close. I'll break out the 0.03 and let's see if there's anything else like some mid-tones that I can incorporate in here. Um, maybe I feel like this area right here could be shaded back. You know, again, we can we can think about some cross hatching here. I feel like this, all this information is still a bit light. So don't be afraid to jump back into a certain area and just add to it. 
I know, it's easier said than done because, you know, you get to a certain point in your artwork and you're like, I don't want to touch it. What if I mess it up? But you know what? Sometimes you just got to mess it up. Now, one other thing, and I'm going to have to get up to grab this sucker. This beauty. Love this pen. This is the Uniball Signal White. And let me see, make sure it's it's almost always works, which is fantastic. Because a lot of these whiteout pens, I had bad luck with them. Um, but what's neat about this is you can get in there and just, you know, correct some things. But that's not really what I'm trying to do here. I'm actually just trying to separate some of this information, this detail. So, uh, for instance, I might put a little tiny bit of light source right there. And then as I come back... You know, I kind of need a little bit heavier rendering to show you, but I really recommend playing around with these as well. You can do a lot of neat effects with them. Uh, let me see, like for instance, if I was still working on cap here, I could get in here and like highlight this, the ridge of the um, suit. So you can do all these neat little details with this. Um, it's it's got a pretty refined tip for being white out anyways So give it a try They're They're great brushes or pff, pens my bad And that's when I bring this one to a close when I start messing up and calling Pens brushes and brushes pens. So at any rate, hopefully you've enjoyed this video I would love to know what you think in the comments section below. I'm gonna try to bring you more uh, traditional art videos as I can um, but yeah if you can, like and share the video. Let me know what you think. And more content is on the way. So as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.